Fresh out the boat in the promised land, 24 hours got a gun in my hand. Sage brush prayer by as I can see, God bless manifest destiny. Not a hot drinking and a man, a bad man, traded money for my soul and my quick hand. Contract pen for some men to be dead Paid me silver to fix it with lead Thoughts are circling overhead There's a number to my their song Covered in blood and I only see red Living too fast and won't last long Ever on the run, never look back, son Live by the gun and you're gonna die young I'm wasted on a cold dark day Smell their fear from a mile away Charged in fast as the morning broke Thunder and lightning in a cloud of smoke Forts are circling overhead There's a number to my death song Covered in blood and on the sea red Living do to won't last long Ever on the run, never look back, son Live by the gun and you're gonna die young Ever on the run, never look back, son You live by the gun and you're gonna die young Going into this season, my freezer was already full of wild game, so killing an elk to fill the freezer wasn't as high a priority. This year, rather, I decided to set my sights on trying to kill the biggest archery bull I had ever taken in my life. With my history in this area, I felt confident I could do it. It was a good year to set the bar high. I kind of feel like we spooked an elk right when we got here. And I, yeah, I don't know if it just kind of was timed with everything shutting off or if it kind of went into the herd. We did hear a bugle after that, just right here, so. Problem is, our wind is all over. Calls me to act now Constant distractions To burn my attention To the fact that I'm No longer happy somehow This early in the season is hot Water is key. I could tell the drought was going to be my biggest hurdle to overcome. 
The combination of swirling winds, little water and feed, and noisy stocking conditions was going to make it a tough year. I liked this spot for a couple of reasons. One, I was directly between where I had last heard bulls bugling and their closest water source. And secondly, I was set up along a fallen down cattle fence where the elk didn't have to jump to cross. It made a great funnel on their way to water. And with the wind direction, the setup seemed perfect. The first couple of elk to show up proved to us this setup could work, including the most unique spike I've ever seen. I knew if the cows kept going, he'd eventually cross. But the lead cow caught our wind just enough and would not go any further. He was close, just not close enough. The only difference between me getting my shot or him running away was how close he stayed with his cows. Today he hung back and that saved his life.
where the pavement ends. On X begins. This bull came in so quick to my calls that I didn't have time to set up properly. Even though he wasn't a bull I was going to shoot, I'll never pass up the opportunity to get close to elk. Sometimes the hard part with elk is they can pinpoint where those calls come from so much. But if you don't have a little bit of terrain between you and them, they can stand there and see exactly where the calls come from. So you end up in this position of feeling like you need to call because they won't come. But then them knowing exactly where you're at, and I think that's what happened. Had we had a decoy or just anything, Man, that's a beautiful sunrise. What a way to wake up. That was awesome. This season has been a series of ups and downs. I knew going into it that if I was going to let an arrow go, it was going to be on a truly impressive animal. And that's not easy to do. Man, just when you think it's going to work, like that bull was coming, and he was big. But you just can't friggin' outrun the wind. And I could tell the way he was cutting, he was trying to catch our wind. So I was like, okay, let's get further up so he circles below us. And even running up the side of the mountain to try to beat it, we still, we still couldn't. God, that was a big bull. He was coming right at us. It's now September 23rd. Hunting has been getting harder as the season has gotten longer. After being home and spending time with family for a few days, I returned re-energized and hopeful the elk were a little more fired up. After getting set up, we heard a bull that sounded deep and raspy. That type of bugle that you hear that makes you want to chase it. I didn't see him really good, but I did see this bull good enough to know he was worth dedicating the rest of my season on.
Just to pursue a bull of this caliber is worth waiting the whole season for. He's straight over in that line of trees, just standing right between the trees looking at us. Just off like the corner of these rocks, up and to the right. to come together for this to work, but at least we got eyes on a good bull. That's, that's half the battle. just came out of here and went back towards that cat. He was the one right here. He's on his feet going back that way. Sometimes there's only so much you can do. It's hard to describe hunting this country when the wind won't cooperate, but it completely shuts you down. But if you want another chance at these big bulls, you have to watch them walk away and make sure they don't know you're there. Now I didn't know it at the time, but that was the last real hunt I had the rest of the season. I stayed on the bull for three days after that, and then he just disappeared like big bulls do. Hunting only the most mature bulls takes real discipline. Having a full freezer helps. I put 24 days of bow hunting in, waiting for that one moment that never did come this year. But when you bow hunt and you set your sights on a truly impressive animal, you're going to go home empty-handed more times than not.